so here we are in Blender 2.83, you know, working and duplicating objects and performing Booleans. However, this version of HardOps isn't the most up-to-date version, and I can tell because the icon isn't the Hops logo for the About button. And also, if I hover over it, there's no tooltip information. So let's say I wanted to go in and just update HardOps and Box Cutter at the same time. I already have the updates downloaded. So what I can do is, while I'm in this session, just go into the Preferences, and the first thing we can do is just remove hard ops. We'll just remove it. And then using install from file, we'll just install the latest version, Mercury. And after waiting a moment, it'll pop up. And sometimes you'll get an error due to registration between these updates. But instead of dealing with that at this time, we're going to go back. We're also going to do the same thing to box cutter. We'll remove box cutter. And we're going to install the latest version, which is just a micro update. And we'll attempt the same thing within the same session. I just wanted to show problems that can arise and how we can possibly solve them. So we have box cutter enabled, but hard ops was problematic. And when in doubt, it's always good to close Blender and reopen. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So now with our new session back up, we can just click to get rid of the splash screen, go under our preferences. And under preferences, just click to enable hard ops. And after a moment, the add-on will enable. Sometimes it'll take a moment, depending on your computer. And now we are good to go. So if we expand the hops button, you can see that the hops icon is green, indicating that hops is up to date. If we hover over it, we can see that there is a about information. And also by hovering over, we can see that this is updated on the tooltip as well. But sometimes whenever you're dealing with updates, you can run into installation issues. And for that reason, closing and reopening Blender is often the first step with the next one being to load from factory defaults in order to make that process easier. So when it comes to a clean installation, I will go ahead and just load up Blender 2.9, which I haven't done any installation for. And of course, it'll open up full screen, max screen, as blenders often do when they're new to this world. So we'll just scale down the window appropriately to make it fit. And now we have it configured. So now we can just, actually 2.9 is already configured in this case. So let me show you another interesting thing. So. You know, when it comes to accessing your Blender files on your computer, uh, I like to press Windows and R in order to um, type in percent, app data percent, and then I can go to the Blender Foundation slash Blender location. But you can always just start from app data and then locate this yourself. And I'm just going to delete the 2.9 folder. And now if I close this Blender and then reopen it again, it'll actually be clean. And that's what I refer to as nuking the installation. We'll choose left click search and we'll just make this the right size. But anytime that you're having installation issues, you can always just clear the folder that's appropriately named for the version inside your local location in order to just try things clean. But it's sometimes easier to just use file and load factory default. So we'll choose left search and save new defaults. And under edit and preferences, we can go ahead and bring up our preferences. And under the add-ons area, I will just paste my path, which I do not have, but I have them downloaded here. So we'll go ahead and first install Mercury. And with no previous version of HardOps installed, there shouldn't be any registration issues. So you should be able to just go in and enable it without any problem. Unlike the previous scenario in which um, I was actually replacing an installation, which things can be a little more troublesome. So we'll also install the latest version of Box Cutter. And now with that enabled, we are good to go. So the next thing I want to show is, you know, usually I go through and just configure my preps a little bit. There's always things I enjoy using, like uh, right now I'm using Deep Gray. And, you know, typically with my 3D viewport, I always change the color of my active object to be something not the default, which I guess throws a lot of people off. Also, I like to change my outline width and my face dot size, which you won't see, but a lot of people ask how I get round vertices, and it's because I go in and scale them up right here every time. So we're just looking through our settings, 
not doing anything radical here. We already have our add-ons enabled that we need. I'm not going to use emulate three button mouse since it messes with alt clicking on things. We do want to turn off auto perspective. That one drives me a little nuts. And we also want to make sure that we enable CUDA for all available hardware, of course, auto run Python scripts and recent files will up to 30 and maybe lower the auto save to a minute. And with that, Blender is pretty configured. So the next thing is I'll press shift H and just hide everything. And so the other thing I want to talk about is how at the very last second, we snuck in the ability for users to press control alt shift and L in order to bring up this like kind of modal test. And if you press a, the logo will get placed at your cursor. And then when you roll the wheel, you can actually scale it up. And I just wanted a more interactive way of actually placing this logo because it's actually uh, annoying to go through the prefs and deal with it. But now that we have it placed, I can go in here and bring up my preferences, save preferences. And you know, this monitor that I'm on is actually a really ultra wide monitor. And there's another monitor on top of it, which means if I reopen Blender, it won't open the way that I have it. So also what I tend to do is I'll lower my screen a bit like so, and then choose save startup file just from down here. And then if I were to close Blender, then the next time I reopen it, it'll actually open up at least on the correct monitor. It drives me crazy whenever Blender opens up on the wrong monitor, but if I can't get it to open in the right position, at least I have a way to open it on the right monitor. So now we have Blender just set up, ready to go. I can press Alt W, jump into box cutter. I can press Q and go under bevel and add a bevel and just do it. And of course my antivirus gets triggered over and over every time I use these new newer versions of Blender. So it's probably time to change antivirus. But with that, that's all it takes to get started with just a clean installation of Blender and installing hard ops and box cutter. So recently I've changed my Blender update system and at this time I'm using something called Blender Launcher and I just wanted to go over that. So when it comes to Blender Launcher, um, you're able to go to the releases page and basically just download your version for either Linux or Windows and we'll just quickly download that. And to demonstrate it, I'll go through the mild inconvenience of completely removing the version I know and love and we will just delete everything associated with it. So I'll delete the builds, I'll, I'll delete the launcher. And that way I can just show you guys how I would start off with things. I always enjoy kind of seeing how many blenders I can rack up in my deletion. I, I in fact deleted it on my other computer recently and it was also astronomically humongous. So blender might be small, but collecting it daily definitely adds up like some Pokemon cards. So now that I have things deleted, I will open up the zip for the Blender version manager that was downloaded. And by bringing this over and just dragging this in, we'll just have this on the folder in Blender on my desktop. And we'll create a folder as well, call it builds, just because I know the moment I launch this, it's gonna ask for that. So we'll go ahead and just double click Blender launcher. And the program will pop up, of course, as if it's never seen me before. And more than likely it hasn't since I deleted all of its information. So the first thing that we'll do is ask where Blender builds will be stored. We'll click continue and we'll choose the builds location and just select the folder. And then after a moment, the launcher will come up. Playing with all these launchers and Blender updating systems has really made me interested in the world of launchers because they definitely reduce the amount of keystrokes it takes going to these websites. In fact, let's launch that again, just in case they forgot about us. With our launcher up, it looks a little lonely. There's nothing under stable releases, daily builds, experimental builds, custom builds. But if we go to downloads, we can see that we can download the latest stable release of Blender 2.83. So we'll go ahead and do that under daily builds. We'll download the latest daily build of 2.9 as well as 2.83. And we'll just wait for these to download. Of course, on my internet collection, collection, it'll take a moment, but we'll just wait for it. 
And now that the downloads have completed, they'll begin their extraction process. And after being processed, they'll show up in our library. So if we look at stable releases, we don't have anything. If we look at daily builds, we still don't have anything. And that's because they're still in the process of extracting. So it looks like I'm filling the GSIP test on my i9, but we'll just give that a moment. Now that the downloads have complete, we can go over to library and we see under daily builds that we have the two latest versions downloaded. So I can choose to just quickly launch into 2.9, which will launch it to the installation that we went over previously. Of course, I want to emphasize that we definitely support both 2.83 and 2.9 at this moment in time. 2.9 is always changing, so we never know what they'll throw at us next to kind of wrench us up real good. But we'll press Alt W, jump into box cutter, and just kind of play with box cutter for a moment. We'll control click bevel to just add a new bevel. We'll alt click sharpen to add a way to normal. And if we look at the modifier panel in 2.9, you know, the main attraction is that you're able to kind of drag and move modifiers around like this in 2.9, which is pretty cool. And it can come in handy. However, you do lose the ability to move a modifier up and down via the little buttons. However, if you look at the hard ops helper and the control tilde, we do have more of a classic layout where you're still able to move modifiers the way that you were probably used to traditionally. However, the layouts had to take a bit of a form change due to some of the changes that came about in 2.9. So we'll just go ahead and close that and launch, not 2.9, we want to launch 2.83. And 2.83, of course, is going to load full screen, max screen, because I didn't configure it as good as I did with 2.9. But we can go in, start box cutter, and even move the window around to skeleton fit inside of our box. And so in 2.83, you don't have the ability to drag modifiers around. This is more of the traditional layout that everyone's used to. But you do have the ability to, of course, shift scroll still to move modifiers up and down the stack, which is also still very handy in 2.9. But I just wanted to point out some of these differences just in case that you were wondering what's the differences between 2.83 and 2.9 at this time. Another thing is that in 2.83, you have an additional opt-in option under the drop down to antivirus again, you have an option under the drop downs to choose to use the helper 2.90 layout. And what this means is that if you check it, when you press control tilde, you'll bring up the helper, but it'll use the layout similar to what we were looking at over in 2.9. So it's just a different type of style with it. Nothing, nothing too different. It's just something to experiment and try if you're still using 2.83.